Vito, he has, he actually, he was there for the ass rape, delicious boy murder, and yet he still brings up the Hydrox and Oreo thing back with Polly and begins <laughs> the argument all over again. He's totally, he's totally clueless. You, you mentioned that Tony loved his, the dumbest character, but I'd say it's, it's neck and neck between Vito and uh, uh, Tony Love. Although, uh, probably if you looked at the two books that they both appear in, Vito seems a bit more menacing and a bit more dark within his own yes. familial circumstances in Vincetti Brothers, uh, whereas we, where as Tony Luft is more consistently stupid. Gino, of course, Gino Vincetti in, in the Vincetti Brothers, Vito's son, uh, is also a dumbass, but you, you get the sense that he, he has occasionally moments of clarity uh, that, you know, it might only be 45 seconds of clarity, whereas as Luft lives in an eternal London fog. Yeah, and you mentioned the Vin Vincetti brothers. He can have moments of clarity in the sense that he at least understands the inner workings of his family, whereas Tony Love just is clueless in all facets, it seems like. Mm. Um, but there, there's also, besides that, uh, besides the, the actual argument, there's another scene. I, I can't quite place the chapter, but they're dumping off something, and they, they, uh, they can't decide whether it's an atomic bomb or whether it is uh, some kind of liquid within it. There's also yeah, the nuclear waste. I'm not sure which idiot it is who says it, but they say, well, it, it, maybe it's ice, and Big Frank has to say, well, ice weighs the same as water because it comes from water. Uh, and at the end of that exchange, once the, once the deed has been done and everything, there's also a scene where he, he, he can't quite find a place based on the location of a tree. But mm. anyway, he goes... He's pissed off Polly so much during this whole interaction and is utterly clueless when he is smiling at him and Polly says, Well, get away from me, go on. And then he hugs Polly. Yeah. And it's one of those one of those moments that uh, you kind of see the transition of eyes because you get Polly's perspective, which is disgust, and then you have Vito on with his little sidekick character, Freddie, yeah. where he's going and saying well, what a what a great moment that was between the two of us and it was very moving and you are my hero as well Vito uh, so it's well it shows you a hierarchy that. too because Freddie Freddie Zaccone or Zaccone is uh, he looks up to Vito of all people and Vito is such a dumbass and and so you have you have you have in that scene you have Freddie as sort of the newbie young guy looking up to dumbass Vito and then you have yeah, I mean, in a sense, it's sort of a lesser, dumber version of the Paulie uh, and Big Frank relationship. But it 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 shows you, you know, the hierarchy, and uh, these two idiots can't do anything. And and you know, I mean, they're obviously dumping something toxic. And uh, this is one of those scenes too where we get the difference between Big Frank and Paulie. Paulie's like, uh, you know, we've been contracted. You know, famously, the mafia. Uh, in the Northeast and throughout most of the country and in the cities that they were, were controlled would took care of sanitation, especially private sanitation. And they would just dump things here or there. Uh, really uh, shitty corporations would either have their workers do it or they'd contract it out to mob run places who would dump things in, you know, places like Love Canal, uh, you know, these toxic uh, dump site cleanup places uh, of the 1970s and 80s where, you know, you had babies born with, you know, eight fingers on each hand kind of thing because of this. So Paulie and his, and his crew, uh, you know, these idiots are dumping. They don't know, they can't find the, the actual lake to dump it. So that's why Paulie and Big Frank come out because they're like going to some meeting with a mob boss on the way. So they decide to, and this is, I guess, in upstate New York or Connecticut or what, wherever they're supposed to dump it. And uh, uh, it's like, you know, uh, Paulie, has no clue. He doesn't give a fuck if, if you know, babies are going to be born, you know, disfigured in five years because of this stuff and shit. But Big Frank has that. Uh, and it, it's those moments, Big Frank's kindnesses towards Ass Rape Delicious Boy, Big Frank's awareness, uh, for example. Big Frank has a few scenes where uh, he feels for Sonny Liston when Paulie's berating him. Or the scene where they later capture Johnny Mathis for Paulie's birthday party, and 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 Paulie is going off on a racist tirade and calling Mathis a fag, uh, and and this scene where where Big Frank has this awareness of 
a greater social evil. Big Frank probably has no qualms even then with killing someone who gets in his way, but he doesn't want to hurt ostensibly innocent people, as Paulie doesn't give a fuck. And yet, that sets up the ending where we see that Big Frank is is just a different type of total evil uh, than Paulie. Uh, you know, the way he ends up uh, killing off uh, Paulie's uh, brood to take over the family uh, and have Paulie killed. So, you know, that and that and those kinds of scenes set up, you know, the, the turn of Big Frank to become the super criminal that he is in the Vincetti brothers uh, because we see glimpses of his humanity. We find out a bit, a little bit more about him and his daughter. Uh, through these conversations with Cheryl, we find out a little bit about his ex-wife and his current wife, and uh, we find out, you know, these little things, the the sneaker scenes, that that Big Frank has has had these moments. We never see that with Paulie, uh, and in fact, Paulie, I actually did a short story in one of my manuscripts called uh, Domesticities in Eleven Cities. Uh, in the 1900s, back in like 1906, the, the story is set with Paulie and his little brother, whose name slips my mind. And uh, we see even then Paulie is like uh, drowning kittens and, and, and torturing animals. So we know Paulie is a psychopath from the get-go, uh, whereas Big Frank probably has these tendencies, but he doesn't, he, like I said, he doesn't give in totally, probably until you know his mid-30s, when, when there's no coming back, and that's the symbolism of the sneakers and and all of these ostensibly small humanizing moments like not wanting to poison people with this toxic waste uh, just slowly disappear. He realizes who he has to be to achieve what he wants to be, whereas Paulie always was that. Well, he makes a comment with Cheryl about how it's always been a myth that they don't, they only kill their own. I I wonder since he's much more calculating than Polly, if that's really any kind of humanity that he's showing in more along the lines of duplicity because he he's guilt guilted after he gets Angie's friend killed and that may just be a way of him justifying his existence by going on to the why he doesn't want to kill innocents well um, Paul I, I, there's, I, I, there's I other disagree. things about him too that seem to be uh, much more duplicitous than Polly is. Polly is what he is, whereas Big Frank is always hidden in his motives. Yeah, Paul, especially when. Paul, but that's a that's the great reveal of the book yeah, later. Polly, Polly is is every bit as manipulative. We see this with the scenes with uh, uh, Jimmy Hoffa, and we see this with uh, countless other scenes. Paul is every bit as manipulative. He he, like you said though. He is much more upfront about it. He's like, "Yeah, I'm a I'm a motherfucking son of a bitch. So what?" Whereas Big Frank is a motherfucking son of a bitch, but he is going to put on airs in some sense. Yeah, he's kind of, he's in a way. If uh, went to your country, you could compare him to say Donald Rumsfeld, whereas Polly is more like uh, Kissinger. In that he's more reveling in, in his in his mayhem than, than Frank is. He's more mm. hidden and, and duplicitous in that sense. Wouldn't you agree with that analogy? Well, I, I wouldn't. I, I don't know about the Rumsfeld Kissinger analogy. I mean, Kissinger. Uh, uh, I don't know if that's. A, but I mean, I, I I know what you're saying, but I don't know if Kissinger and Rumsfeld would be the two best <laughs> avatars for to to make that point. But regardless. Uh, that is that is sort of the difference.